We are recording. Hello, I'm Paul Vanuk from Recording Magazine. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the ISA 828 Mark II Classic ISA Preamp from Focusrite, which we also review in the May 2021 issue of Recording Magazine. My guess is you probably know Focusrite thanks to its extensive line of audio interfaces. However, the British manufacturer actually got its start building consoles and recording desks. One of Focusrite's most significant creations was the ISA 110 preamp designed by Rupert Neve. Yes, that Rupert Neve. In addition to being found in the legendary and rare Focusrite Forte console, in the mid-1980s, the ISA 110 was one of the first standalone microphone preamps on the market. ISA is short for Input Signal Amplifier, and updated versions of the ISA 110 are still available in the Focusrite line today. Each one is built around a classic Lundahl LL1538 transformer. Current models include the ISA 1, which we reviewed back in the August 2009 issue, the two-channel ISA 2, the 4-channel ISA-428 Mark II, and the 8-channel ISA-828 Mark II. Giving the 428 and 828 their Mark II status are updated digital option cards, which include Dante audio over IP network capability and a new updated ultra-efficient power supply. The ISA-828 Mark II features 8 matching preamp channels with 48 volt phantom power, phase switching, a high-pass filter, and a channel insert. You also get a choice of mic, line, or instrument input on channels 1 through 4, mic or line on channels 6 through 8, four levels of input load impedance, and a six-step LED input meter. Gain is set by a pair of yellow knobs. The first one is a four-position stepped pot offering minus 20 to plus 10 dB of line gain in 10 dB steps, or two levels of microphone gain selectable with a 30 to 60 dB button for a choice of 0 to 30 dB, or 30 to 60 dB, also in 10 dB steps. The second yellow knob is a variable trim pot offering an additional 20 dB of gain for both mic and line signals. This gives the ISA 828 Mark II an impressive 80 dB of microphone gain and 30 dB of line level gain. This is also the sole level control for the front panel quarter inch instrument inputs available on channels one through four offering 10 to 40 dB of gain. One of my favorite features each channel offers a choice of four selectable microphone impedances of low, the original ISA 110 setting, medium, and high. On the four instrument inputs, you get a choice of low or high impedance settings. For connections, unlike many audio interfaces and preamps that make use of combo jacks and shared inputs, on the ISA 828 Mark II, each input type has its own dedicated physical input. There are eight XLR microphone inputs and eight quarter inch TRS line inputs. The eight analog line outputs are on a DB25 connector. This is convenient if you're connecting to a D sub equipped patch bay or audio interface. However, it will require a male XLR or quarter inch TRS breakout snake if not. There's also a second DB25 connector used for the input or return of channel inserts. This feature is not available when using the ISA 828 Mark II as an analog-only preamp. However, when connecting the unit digitally to another interface or Dante network, the digital side handles the channel outputs and the analog line outputs can then be repurposed as the insert sends, allowing for the inline connection of a favorite EQ or dynamics processor. Speaking of digital, a rear expansion slot greatly expands the unit's connectivity and features even edging the 828 Mark II into interface or more accurately expander territory, as each of the available expansion cards are analog to digital only. The unit features no digital to analog conversion and no monitoring facilities. Card options include the two-channel ISA ADN2 and the eight-channel ISA ADN8. Both offer BNC word clock I.O. and a set of RJ45 Dante output ports. I really like the flexibility offered by the 8-channel card. Since many audio interfaces already come equipped with ADAT optical inputs, it's very easy to add 8 additional channels of high-quality analog input to an existing setup. 
As my MacBook Pro is equipped with the Audinate Dante Virtual Sound Card, it was also easy to add the ISA to my Dante network for remote recording and live streaming. And of course, you can use Focusrite's own RedNet control with it as well. So, how does the ISA 828 Mark II sound? Well, I find the ISA preamps to be the perfect example of a classic console sound that's neither heavily colored, nor is it too transparent or clinical. I would place the ISA sound between the Neve and API camps, gently leaning towards the smooth low mid saturation of Neve, while offering more upper end focus. Thanks to the extreme levels of possible gain and headroom, there is no microphone or source that the ISA 828 Mark II cannot handle with ease. As mentioned, I'm a huge fan of impedance switching in preamps. They offer a great way to milk subtle tonal changes out of microphones by altering their reactive relationships with the preamp. Rather than talk about it, let's listen to how impedance settings can affect both microphone and instrument sources. We're going to start with my Rickenbacker 4003 bass. Listen as I switch between the low and high impedance settings. <laughs> Next, let's listen to a quick tune put together by my friend Matthew Lautz, who's going to play acoustic guitar and sing while I join in on percussion with a selection of classic microphones. Once I was a shadow Image on the ground, changing light would hide my disposition. Once I was a fool, a candle without a wick, a shell without a place to burn a fire, bring the fire. If you're thinking, wow, that really was subtle. I'm not sure I could even pick out a difference. That's okay. It is that subtle. And different impedances affect different microphones differently. Either way, the ISA 110 is already an established classic, and having eight of them at your disposal is an excellent option for any source or style of music. If you'd like to learn more about the ISA 828 Mark II, the option cards, or even RedNet, be sure to stop by pro.focusrite.com for details. You can also check out my review in the May 2021 issue of Recording Magazine. If you enjoyed this video review, be sure to give us the thumbs up below, and better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel for additional video reviews, product comparisons, how-to videos, and more. 
Then stop by our website, recordingmag.com, for the best in all things recording, where you can check out our latest podcast. And better yet, subscribe to our print publication, which is now in its 35th year. We'll see you soon. Yeah.